right, guys, today I want to give you a little tip that can help you defend gi chokes a lot better. All right. What you need to remember with gi chokes is you need two hands to finish any gi choke. I mean, some guys can get side mount and dig their forearm in there really well, which is one arm, and get it. Um, and that depends, like, if you're inexperienced and the guy's a lot bigger and or stronger. But traditionally, gi chokes, no matter if it's a baseball bat, an Ezekiel, or a cross choke, he needs two hands to finish it. So I'll, I'll give you guys a few examples of what I'm talking about. Put them in your guard. Face the camera. So. All right, so Frank has me in his guard. Now, if he goes for a traditional cross choke from guard, he's going to sit up, and, you know, he's going to come in with the other arm, and there it is, right? So as soon as I feel a hand on the collar, okay, it doesn't end the attack. You can go for other sweeps and other stuff. But I, I pretty much shut down the choke because he can do whatever he wants with this arm. He can, you know, he can have it in there and, and dig and try to choke. He can't finish me here. He can't do anything. Right? It's when he gets that other one in and he slides it where I'm going to get it. Consequently, say he mounts me and goes for that. It's a good basic attack from mount. Again, he gets in one in the collar. Okay, i got to shut this down. Because this is a lot different now. He has gravity. And he can crush me here with this. He can't really tap me. As long as I, I keep my chin down and I look away from his forearm, but it's when this one gets out that you know he's able to get in there and finish it. So killing that second hand, I can you can relax a little bit. I'm, again, in this position, I'm mounted, so I want to get out. Absolutely. Where the guard, you know, it's a little bit different, and I have gravity on my side and guard, but here, killing this is gonna shut down at least this attack. Okay. Now notice how I'm trapping it. I'm not trapping it up here where he can go for an arm bar. I mean, I'm trapping it down here to where he can't use it, and I can use this. Not only to defend his choke, but to set up my own escapes. Okay? If he has an Ezekiel, right? If he gets under and under, we gotta stop that second arm. That, that, this isn't the arm that's gonna tap me, it's this one. So if I can get my arm in, if I can get it in here and stop it, it's gonna defend it, right? He got in a little bit on me there, but if I'm coming in, I know he's gonna go for the Ezekiel. Okay? This is gonna be miserable, and I'm gonna have to endure a lot of pain to get out, but I've, I've shut down his ability to choke me from here with the gi, at least on this choke. How's he gonna finish it? He needs to get that, on the Ezekiel, he needs to get that across my throat and come in. If I feel that, and I bring my hands up, you know, it's this one or this one, I don't know how he's gonna get it, right? It's gonna be really difficult, okay? Same thing on a baseball bat choke. If he goes knee on belly, knee on belly, and he goes for a baseball bat choke where he's shooting, the, shooting it in here, right? Again, I gotta stop this. If I let him get that, and he just spins north-south, I'm tapping. So, again, I, I don't want to bait him to getting one arm in, because that's going to be kind of suicidal. But if, I, if he gets one arm in on me, okay, he needs this. At least now, I can start setting up my escapes, okay? So as you see, this concept of killing the second hand, it works on guard, because you, know, you can do a lot of those chokes from guard, or, or it works from top. Just know that when they have a hand on your collar or in their own sleeve, they're, they're, they're setting up a choke. So look for that second hand. If you stop that second hand, you're pretty much stopping their attack. It gives you a chance to, you know, slow them down and also think about what you want to do to get out, okay? So remember, stopping that second hand is going to stop most gi chokes.